Hello, welcome to the part 17 of this video series. We are looking at some of the real certification questions on AWS Solution Architect Associate. Today we are going to cover these topics. So the questions will be linked to these topics. Please hit the subscribe button and if you like the video, hit the like button as well. It keeps me motivated to put some more contents which are informative in nature. You can refer to playlists this is one playlist and there is an old one which is still relevant enough of build up let's jump to the questions please pause the video here if you want to read this carefully it's it's simple you have a database which is rds for postgres usually you see you see that whenever people try to log in they put in your username and password here what the organization wants is you have to put a password rotation policy now and they want to do it with least amount of operational overhead we have these four options, if you see these options, KMS is used for encryption. It is new, not used for password rotation. Okay, this is wrong. You see this documentation, KMS is an encryption and key management service, okay? What is the use case of this? For example, banks, you have Bank of America, Barclays and so on. Their databases will be encrypted and the encryption key will be stored in AWS KMS. Now let's look at option B and C. Both are using systems manager parameter store See, this systems manager, primarily it is a collection of capabilities. Why it is used? It is used to manage your applications and infrastructure running on AWS cloud. It will, system manager simplifies application and resource management. It is not for password rotation. So that means C is wrong and D is wrong as well. We are left with only one option that is secrets manager. It is so cool because we are not confused now. What this documentation says is, if you want to access a database, okay usually what you do is you are storing the embedding the credentials the secret that is the password and when you are doing it yourself there is more to do when you are trying to rotate the credentials okay hence you can use secrets manager what it does is it will help you replace the hard-coded credential in your code including passwords and you can put api calls to secrets manager your secrets will be kept in secrets manager Another important thing which our question is asking is you have to automatically rotate the secret. This is something which secrets manager does it itself. So we got our answer. Let's move to the next question. You may pause this video here to read this question carefully. Let me explain you the story. See, there is an application which the company wants to move to a virtual private cloud. And this application will be available to public over unsupported TCP ports. The public endpoints, see the requirement here is it should be able to handle 3 million requests per second. Now when this moves to AWS, the new endpoint should handle the same 3 million itself. Okay, This is the requirement. Now what should we recommend? There are four options. What should we recommend? See, whenever you see TCP or UDP, think about network load balancer. That is point one. Okay, so where do, out of these four options, we just have one option where there is network load balancer. So this is my answer. Why? Again, you see this 3 million requests per second. This has network load balancer is capable of handling millions of requests per second. So this exactly fits our goal. See, if it is ALB and uh, TCP based application, ALB cannot fit in. So this B is wrong because they are recommending ALB. So if you see this, ALB is layer 7 and NLB is layer 4. ALB will support HTTP and HTTPS traffic, but NLB will support TCP and UDP traffic. That's the difference. So uh, B is wrong for sure because it uses AL ALB. That is wrong. And where do we see ALB anywhere else? Yeah, we see ALB here as well. So C is wrong as well. Okay. See, the fault with D is, one fault that I am seeing is, it is telling you to configure Lambda functions to provision concurrency to process the request. Now, Lambda, it, it times out in 15 minutes. That is something which you should remember. And hence, when it is trying to process 3 million requests per second, it will time out. First thing is, it will not have the capability as well because it will have to scale to enormous heights. Second is, we want a load balancing solution. We do not need a Lambda function here. NLB is a load balancing solution. So this is my answer. We will lock this answer and move forward. This question, please pause the video here. Read it carefully, please. See, there is one account and there are two VPCs situated in US2 region. That is in one region, both the VPCs. So this is your account, this box. 
and these two green boxes are your VPCs. Okay, and both are situated in US West 2. It's a single region and the business must permit network communication between these VPCs. So this VPC, this VPC to VPC, communication should happen. Each month about 500 GB of data will be transferred from year to year or year to year. 500 GBs will be transferred between the VPCs. What is the most cost effective solution? The cost effective solution. Now there are four options. Let's scan through the options one by one. See, in this question, it is time to apply our thumb rule. If you go to the playlist where I have displayed the thumb rules for each and every service, you will see that between VPC to VPC, VPC peering connection is best cost effective. So let me give you a brief walkthrough of what is VPC pairing. You see this diagram. These will be connected through and VPC pairing is a networking connection between two VPCs that enables to route the traffic between them using private IPv4 addresses or IPv6 addresses. So these are, you can connect these two using private addresses. Mind you, you will not be accessing it through the internet using private IP addresses. Mind you, we have both the VPCs in the same region, but if it was in another region, in different regions, it can still support. And that is called inter-region VPC pairing. So this is my answer uh, for sure. But let's look at the other options. A says to use AWS Transit Gateway. See, the primary purpose of Transit Gateway is to connect on-premises with your cloud VPCs. We don't use it for a VPC to VPC pairing or connection. Our question is straightforward. There are two VPCs. We have to connect between them. There is no on-premises in question here. Since there is no on-premises in question, A is wrong. Let's look at option B. It tells you to use site-to-site -site VPN tunnel. See, you use this to connect your remote network to a VPC, not to a VPC to a VPC. That's why B is wrong. Let's look at D. See, D in terms of solution will work, but it is just like Mercedes Benz. It is not most cost effective. If somebody tells you, I want to buy a cost effective car, you most likely would go with a Hyundai or a Kia. You would not go with a Mercedes Benz or a Jaguar or a BMW. Similarly, in this connection, direct connect, you it's very costly. Okay, and it is not the most cost effective solution. That is what the question asks. And hence, this is the final answer. Let's move forward to this question. This is the last question of this video. Please pause this video here and read the question carefully, please. See, the story is very simple. You have a production style workload. That means you are operating in a production environment and you are using Aurora MySQL database cluster. And then there are six replicas as well. Now, what the organization wants is that there is a need for near real-time reporting and those requests, those reports will hit three Aurora replicas. Since it will only hit these three Aurora replicas, these three copies are configured differently from the rest of the DB clusters in terms of computation and memory. So what solution satisfies this requirement? Now, let's scan through the options. From option D, it, this says use a reader endpoint. Okay. See, if you have to connect to read clusters in a single go, in a, then you can do this. You can you, you can connect all the read replicas using a reader endpoint. But this reader endpoint will only answer half of the problem. What about the other half? Like the re reporting request will only go to three Aurora replicas. What about other replicas and other operations? It will not address it. So D is wrong. Option C suggests use any instance endpoints for the selected three nodes. See, again, I would not go into depth of instance endpoints. My point here is they are still addressing selected three nodes. That is these three. What about other nodes, man? Other clusters? C is just half a solution and hence wrong. B says create a three node cluster clone and use the reader endpoint. No, no, boss. That is wrong. That is wrong. You let what we suggest here is create a custom endpoint for the and what happens in custom endpoints is you're trying to address both the parts. First is the read replicas where reports will hit and the other part where other operations can happen. Let the custom endpoints decide that. So this is my final answer. Please, please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. This helps keep myself motivated to put some more information regarding certifications. Do not forget to visit this playlist as well as the previous playlist, which still has relevant questions. Always remember, practice makes a man perfect. So we covered questions related to secrets manager, network load balancer, VPC peering, and endpoints. See you in the next part. Stay tuned.